Hey everybody, I'm going to give it a few minutes to see that everyone's coming online and joining in as they can. And I am hoping that that will be obvious to me in some way as I look at this screen. Um, should have had some background music. Okay. Ah, good. So, I push buttons. And, okay, oh nice, six people already. I can't tell who the six people are, possibly because I'm using my, hey, I see that, hi Jennifer, um, yeah, I'm using my phone instead of uh, the computer, perhaps. Next time I can try that. Hi, Nikki. Great. Okay. Um, so I'll just do some general stuff to begin with. And then uh, when we actually get down to the nitty gritty on how to make these things, we'll have everyone have joined us by then. So, hey, I see people joining us. Nice. Oh, technology must have its place. Okay, so um, uh, I'll show you what inspired me to begin with to show you. I wanted to give you the option to make something like this. Uh, the one that we're going to make today is quite a bit smaller, but totally this is within the realm of possibility. Um, one of the things I want to emphasize is that you really must do more than one of these. <laughs> this, this is your entry, but uh, you will get better the more of these that you make. So this one is a flat tray. This is the one that I had shown a picture of uh, with the uh, two cheeses on it last week and washes up nicely, warm water, soapy, little soapy brush, and uh, it can get wet and dry out quite nicely. Work well as a, as a cheese tray. So this one is the one we're going to do today and it's very uh, square, rectangular, but the same uh, thing can be done on something oval. And this frame, which you can see perhaps better on this side, uh, was made around a piece of, I think this is two by 12, where corners were shaved out so that when you lay your rod on it and you bend this rod all the way around, I'm gonna let go of it because I haven't actually softened this rod and I want it to stay straight. But uh, you get the idea, this will bend around and then you'll have a, a space here to join them. So that's how you'd make one of the uh, oval versions of what we're going to make today. So this is the one that I did practice on. And I think a lot of you might have willows similar to this. If you picked up the packages that uh, Corey and Lorraine's house, thank you, you two. That was beautiful to have those spaces in the city to drop them off. So thanks for offering that. So I made this one. It's approximately, well, this one's actually 11. Uh, by a measuring on this desk thing, which you will see in a minute. This one's 11 by seven. Um, we'll, we'll work with those numbers, something similar to that today. And uh, so we'll start this whole project with this rectangle. And here's a very quick one I made with a thinner piece of willow. This actually wouldn't be suitable because it's too thin for the size that it is but it sort of gives you the idea of where we're heading. I'm taking this twist tie off. I just realized, oh, maybe I had some more. So you will need three twist ties for this to, to uh, hold these three together at some point. Um, but you will see that um, this is how it was. And we're going to learn how to uh, shave off the edge of the one side and the other, uh, edge of the other side so that they blend together and form the same sized rod as you get here, here, and here. So that's our first task is to do some measuring. Um, and I think from now on I'll move the phone here to see the workspace. Do that. We'll maybe turn on a light. 
hanging on a lamp. Hopefully you guys can see this space. I think that's good. Oh, I'm still sort of in it. Oh, well, so be it. Okay, so far, I'm just going to scroll back in case anybody's having issues. I'm just seeing all the highs. Hellos, beautiful. Okay, no issues so far. So if you have any questions, though, let me know. I will attempt to figure out how to answer them. I don't see on the phone a keyboard. Maybe one will show up. Ha! Never know with these things. Okay, so this is our long rod that will form the framework. And I'm putting it down on my measuring board. But if that doesn't work, you guys can also have some sort of measuring tape or ruler. And in this case, I'm going to make it 11 inches. This is a, I'm giving myself a little more than 11 because when I shave the inside of this thick butt end, I know that I'm going to be able to shorten that off a little bit later. But to begin, you'll see there's an, oh, I should also have said on these rods, you'll see there's always, almost always a natural curve to them. And as you look at this, if I hold it this way, it wants to sort of hang on my hand here. The top portion is called the back and the underneath portion is called the belly. We will be doing all of our cuts on the belly. And um, this part here is the butt and this part here is the tip. Kevin's joining us, he's gone. <laughs> okay, so we have a butt, we have a tip, and we have uh, all the cuts are going to be on the belly. So that first cut is going to be at around 11 inches. And because you can still see me, that's good. I'm going to hold my finger where I'm going to make the cut. And I'm going to make a V-shaped cut into this so that the whole rod bends. I always have my thumb on the other side of the rod and I'm cutting towards myself. This is not, you want it against yourself. Oh good, you can steal. Okay, good. I'll do it the proper way. Cutting down into the V. Then take my knife out, flip the rod around. It's hard to see. Right here. There it is. And now I'm going to cut the other portion of the V. That just fell down. And hopefully focus can you hopefully see that V that I've made now I'm going to use the same knife I'm going to poke my knife into that V and I'm going to give it a twist as I lift up the rod so I lifted the rod and I kind of damaged I guess a little bit of the um, the fibers in there so that is going to now be our 90 degree angle and the next one going to be at I think aesthetically now this is up to you as well you guys can completely uh, decide on your own where that next one's going to be but for me I think I want it at seven inches not six and I'm going to make sure that the V starts a little bit below and ends up a little bit above that seven inches so again, against my thumb, one direction, and then the other direction. Those keep falling, so I can't show you what they look like. But again, we have a little notch in there. Maybe you can see it from the side. And I'm going to be pushing my knife into that notch while I twist those fibers. I lift the rod up. So now we have two of our bends so far. We're going to do one more and it's going to be again somewhere around that 11 inch mark which is about here you can see my rod still has that bend in it which I can adjust with a little bit of finger work and my notch is going to be right there there Reading, no 
anybody's got any issues, good stuff. Another twist and a bend. And then my last one will probably be the only one that really matters in terms of cutting, or sorry, measuring, because it's now going to make the rest all square. And even that doesn't matter too much because I can always cut this. So again, I have this one at the seven inch mark and it looks like I ended up a little bigger than that when I measure against here. So try to account for that and make them square by doing so on this side as well. Put my notch right here. One, two cuts. Okay, hopefully you can see that little cut now. It's a little V-shaped notch. Okay, now the rod is getting thin enough, I suspect I can just do it without using my knife trick. Yep, there it goes. Good. So now uh, the thick end is going to be on the outside. So we need to shave off approximately, I don't know what that would be, uh, about eight or nine inches of the inside or the belly end of the thick end. We're going to start narrow here and then as we get to this butt end we'll be cutting quite a bit more off. And uh, you'll see as I went through that, uh, can you see that? There's this pith mark that tells you I'm already halfway through here. So I think I'm not going to cut any more of this because I'm already on less than half of the wood that's left, but I am going to join this pith mark and graduate it all the way to this end so that it's nice and even. This is where your whittling skills come in handy. Maybe at some point vacuuming skills would come in handy after this. <laughs> oh, sometimes. Sweeping skills. What you can't see down there are two buckets that I will put all the scraps into. Then they become either chicken coop flooring or uh, wood stove starters. There we go. So that's a bit more even. I'm going to check at my eye. I'm looking at the side of this to see that it goes from thick to thin. I see right here I have a bulge, so that's where I need to do some adjustments. Some of the finer work can be done with this position rather than the wholesale slaughter I was doing earlier. So we'll just do a little bit at a time now with this kind of a motion and now I'm in a bit more control of the knife so that I can make this more fine. What knife? This is a roofing knife. It has a bit of a curve to it. I have uh, in my kit here, this is my little basket tool, tool kit, and here I have a sharpening stone blade, stone, so that I can sharpen this and keep it nice and sharp. Okay, so that's what that is. These are all now falling in my way. Good. Okay, keep going on the shaving. I'm going to scroll up in case I missed any other questions. Missed which length we are using. Hi, Elvira. Okay, so really, Elvira, it's up to you what length you want to do. Um, maybe judge by the length of your big rod, the biggest rod you're using, to see how big it is. But in my case, it worked out quite nicely to be 11 inches by, what was that anyways? 7, 11 by 7. Okay, I am not thinning the whole, uh, the whole rod, someone is asking. I'm going to go to see what finished question is there. Rochelle, you're asking, 
which part are you twisting? I'm bending, but not sure if the twist part. Ah, you're probably coming back to this. What I was twisting was just the uh, the inner fibers inside of the uh, inside of the rod itself, the wood fibers. So as I place my knife here and twist, that's when you lift this, and it sort of softens those to allow for that 90 degree bend. I hope that answers your question, Michelle. What we are whittling on the inside of the butt end. Yes. Thanks, Deborah. I think I answered. Uh, Naomi, are you thinning the entire length to half diameter? No, it's going to taper. It's starting off as just a little bit taken off. And as we get to this thin end, just a little bit is left. And you'll notice that a lot of this, you can see the pith, which is the center of the, uh, of the rod itself. So I'm going from thick to thin. And maybe you can see that from this angle. And we're on the inside of the thick. Yes, Elvira, we are whittling on the inside of the thick butt end. That's right. And how much? That was, I think I just explained that. Hopefully. <laughs> okay, so we went from really thick to really thin and tapering all the way. And you can use the center uh, pith to tell you where you are in that thinning process. So I'm going to hold it like this so that I have better control. And my thumb is on the back side of the rod and my knife is on the front side of the rod. So it keeps your thumb safe. So I'm just making sure that this is all fairly even and I'll be able to adjust that later when I go because the next step is to make this other thin end match this that we've started. So I haven't cut that off yet. You can still it's got the branchy bit there. I'm going to be putting this thick butt against the thin one, trying to make them square. This is where the quilting mat comes in handy. It helps me make everything square. Okay, so that will have to come in for a bit, which will come out this way. So this I'm now going to cut right here. This is for the fireplace. So now I have my thick end and my thin end. The thin end is going to go underneath and it now needs to be tapered on the outside of it so that it matches the cut that we did on the inside of the butt end. So now I'm going to start from this here and thin it down to very thin at this end. Thick and thin. And this is the thin side. Is that just to take out some bulk? So we, yes, that's right, Jennifer. We are now trying to make these two be the same thickness as this one, this one, and this one. That's our plan. Okay, so the outside now of this thin one is what I'm going to be trimming. Again, doing the sort of wholesale cutting like this away from me. Oh, that went kind of thin, which is quite likely to happen when you don't have as much control. So be careful there. Okay, I'm going to now switch to this so that I don't make it too thin too quickly. Try and make this all flat and even as it gets thinner to the tip end. Hey heart! <laughs> okay. So, this is now the thin end. This is the thick end. We are going to put the thick end on the outside. This is just the first time I'm putting these two together. I expect to have to do this quite a few times until I get them to look exactly the way I want them to. So, if I do that, that's actually not too bad. 
but as I look at this, I see that my rectangle is no longer rectangular. I have gone quite a bit higher on this side. So I need to bring that down. And it looks like I need to still cut off a bit of that butt end that I never did do earlier. So I'm gonna actually take a whole inch of that off, which means I'm going to have to do a lot more thinning on that butt end now. So back to this method here pushing away from me with a knife, getting it nice and thin, especially where it's going to be joining that thin end of that other, uh, the other end of this rod. So we're kind of sculpting these now so that they will form one rod when we bring them together. So that looks good there. That's nice and thick. And that's good. Ah, right here. Can you see that this is a little bit, this thin end is a little bit too thick right here. So I'm going to thin this off and then this will be probably just right. So, I have one twist eye, two twist eyes. Ooh, here's a couple more. Let me just take those two apart. Okay, so my twist eyes are going to help me join these two. You can see that. I'm going to start with one in the center. Make sure that I've got myself square again. I'm going to use my little handy quilting mat for that, but a ruler will suffice as well. I am going to do something else. Oh my goodness. Okay, cool. So, I'm going to use my knee here. I don't know if you can see from there, but on this side, this short end looks to be seven and a quarter and it must have been where I put my angled cuts because on this side why is it ah okay this side I am at seven and a half so I'm a little upset with that that this side here is quite a bit longer than this side and that was just because of where I put this little notch out by a quarter inch. So there's really nothing I can do to fix that other than start over again. If I if I tried to do that here I would have this notch. Well let's do it anyways. I'm gonna do it where it should have been. It's only a little bit off. So What's that adage? Measure twice and cut once? Obviously, do as I say, not as I do. And I have, hmm. Well, I did have somewhere some pliers that would help me with this bend and get this new, or the old bend out of there and get the new bend in. But I just kind of pushed a little harder on that one. And you can see my new one. So I'm hoping that the first few rounds of the weaving will hide the fact that there's a notch there. And now that might have also impacted how my rods fit together. So I'm going to go over that again. Okay. Here's my corner, here's my other corner, here's my knee helping, pulling that in. That now looks a lot better, and this is okay, I don't like this really thin end, off it goes. And there's a bit of a bend here, so I'm still going to adjust that a bit.
I would definitely say this is my least favorite part of basketry. I much prefer just weaving in and out, in and out all the time. But perhaps if I developed a better appreciation for this, then my baskets would be nicer. So, Okay, there's one. I'm going to tie it in the center like that. Take my next twist tie and tie this end. And the last one's right here on this end. Hmm. Okay. Well, it's that same corner, but I will twist tie it. Between the twist tying and the weaving, I'm hoping to hide that little blemish. Okay. Can't offend the gods and be perfect or anything, right? All right, making some room, cleaning up my messes. I'm gonna need that twist tie again. I think a lot of you have uh, six of these rods. Right now I'm going to be doing it with four. Our next uh, next part of our, of our journey is to um, place these long ones on top of our framework. And then from then on, it's smooth sailing, just nice and easy weaving. That's that. Okay. I'm going to put all of this stuff into this bucket. There we go. Okay. Looks like a daikon radish. Oh yeah, it's got good seeds. Don't throw that out. Okay. Alrighty, so... These are the rods that I'm going to play with. I'm going to start with two of the darker colored ones. Oh, I should start reading some of these. Petra, hi Petra. <laughs> yes, it is the artsy part, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you have to know, you know, the artist has mistakes. And they, I meant to do that, you can also say that. <laughs> okay, so one of these is quite bent. But I'm just working out some of those bends here with my hands. These again, this is the butt end of the willow and it can be quite hard on the hands, I guess. So each of our movements from now on is nice and repetitive. We're going to start with the butt end every single time. And uh, the first two weavers that we get in are going to be the hardest because you have to hold everything. But after that, it should be easy. I'm going to take that butt end and I'm going to stick it underneath of the framework. Then it's going to go over top of these, under these, and over top of this. And there's kind of an easy way to do that, those last two. Uh, so I'll show you that. You start with this going under and you give yourself an overlap of about an inch. And that will be trimmed afterwards. So. Right now, my job is to make sure that these are in the right place. Whatever you determine that's going to be. If you wanted to break these up into thirds, one third, two third, three third, then your eye will tell you where that is on your basket. I should also show you that all four of these are such that this is the thin end and this is the thick end. So I'm going to switch two of them around so that I have equal support the length of the basket. Now I have a thick, thin, thick, thin, thick. So as I go in this direction, these are just as strong as this end is. So that's all set up. When you have um, six or three and three, you can just have a look at the sizes of the rods that you're using and those ones will, um, those ones, you, you determine which ends will be the thick side and thin side and just make sure that they're even. Okay. Alvira wants me to bring this closer. It's probably my hand is in the way. I don't know how to get that camera closer, but what I'll do is I'll start this, get this held with this hand, and then I'll bring the camera closer. Okay. Can you see that? Hopefully, I went under one rod, over these two. I'm now gonna go under these two, and then over the last one. 
So I'll show you that again in a minute, but I need both hands to do this. So from this point, watch in a macro kind of way, and then later on, I'll bring it up close for you. So it's gone over these two, and now it needs to go under that. So I'm gonna hold these steady and push down on the table. In this case, I can just do that. That was easy, because I can still move these. It's their very first turn, okay? But the next time, you can see now that that rod is up high. We want it to bend around these. So I'm gonna give this rod a little bit of an extra bend there so that it knows that it has to stay down like that and its next job is to go around this outer one and for that I bring the whole thing to the outside of the table can you guys still see from a macro point of way there we go okay so this part I'm using my thumb and my finger to brace this outer framework and I'm bending the rod around it and you can see the whole thing wanted to come this way when I did that so I'm going to push it that way again make sure that it bends where I want it so I keep shoving it and bending it and I've actually this rod isn't a very happy one I've broken not only the outer bark but I've broken some of these uh, fibers so this one is actually fire, and I'm gonna hope for better from this one. Starting under, goes over, pushing down on that, goes under these two. Now its job is to go around the last one. And I'm gonna do it more slowly than I did that one. And I'm sort of supporting it as I do so. I pushed it a little bit. There we go. Good. Now it's bent all the way around. And I'm going to reach through. See how I'm grabbing it from underneath? Can't really see how does the layering go. Layering. I'll show you. I'm not sure what you mean by layering, Sonia. So just a sec. I'll try and finish this thought and then I'll see what you mean. So now it's come around. It's come from above here, it's come around this one. Its next job is to go over these spokes. And I'm going to position the spokes exactly where I'll want them before I do the bend with the, will with the weaver. So the weaver's job is to keep these in place. So you need to make sure that the weaver is, um, uh, is going around them rather than these going around the weaver. So that's two passes. Started under, went over, under, over. Now as it comes around, you consider that having come from under. Now it goes over these two, under these two, over these two. And its last pass will be around here. And it's at the thinner end of the willow now so that I can just bend it around like that ends up going over those. Now I'm going to put it in the direction that I'll continue weaving. And I can just lift this and it ends up in the right place. So as I came over this one, as long as I push down here, I'll back that up so you see what I did. It's going over here, I push on that, and then I bring that under and ends up over, and that's the last thing that that rod does. So, I'm going to move all of this down, about like that. So that's our first rod in there. And Sonia, you're asking, how does the layering go? On, I think, were you talking about the over-under portions, or were you talking about layering uh, these spokes on top of the frame? So the spokes go on top of the frame, and then the weavers start by going under. We always start with a butt end for this particular project. We always start with a butt end and it always starts underneath. So I'm gonna bring this closer. Maybe you guys can see better. Okay, I have to hold this without that in my hand. So this was my first rod and it started underneath there. and went over the two spokes under over this end 
when it came over here, it went around the frame and then it came back over, went under. And on this side, because it ended on the over section, it went around again, comes back under. You'll see this pattern over and over again. Then this goes over, under, and lands or ends on the upper part. Okay, good, Sonia, I got your question. Deborah is asking, are you using the group of 12 sticks that you gave us? Hmm, I think I gave you a group of six. So, ah, maybe the 12 you're think I, okay, so I did not actually count the colors that I gave you, but I gave you in a bundle like this, some of you anyways, I gave you in this bundle, there was a variety, but I didn't actually count them. Uh, there's just colors of greens. Where's that yellow? There it is. Greens and yellows. And in this case, I'm just separating them in my hand. And for my case, I decided to start with a green, but you can just as easily start with a yellow. And this is your artistic license. You get to make stripes wherever you want. In this case, I made the stripes in the middle. Maybe you don't want stripes at all. Maybe you just want one thick band of yellow in the middle. Maybe you want two borders of yellow and the rest green. So I think that's the 12 that you're talking about, Deborah. I don't know necessarily if you got 12 or 20 or how many of you got of each color, but that these that are all approximately the same size, those are the weavers that we're now working with. Okay, great. So that was the first one. Now the second one, starts in the exact opposite place. Oh, hi, Erica. <laughs> yes, I, I'm trying, trying to figure out how technology works and I'm hoping that it's automatically saved on this, uh, uh, on this Facebook event. As an, uh, as an event, it will have um, expired, but I think you can still go back to past events and have a look at them. Uh, Elvira is having trouble getting around the edge of the frame, then weaving that long end over. It is tricky, especially when you have to hold all of these. That's where kids come in handy. They can be your holders. Get them to pinch right here. Uh, if you don't have kids, you can use your knee like I had. You might have some of these hanging about. These are handy little clamps. They have a little adjustable pinchers out that, <laughs> that can hold things for you. So that part is up to you, whatever creativity you can find to help you hold things. But yeah, it is tricky at the beginning. As soon as we get our first two in, the rest is gonna be great. Oh, thank you, Yvonne. <laughs> okay, so the next one, our second uh, rod that's going in is going to go under the outside frame, just like this one did, but this one's on this side. And from now on, we're going to alternate. Each rod that we add will do three passes and it will start on the opposite side than the, than the previous one. Or it will start on the side where your tip ended. Okay, so this is the tip. This is that. I'm going to push down. I always want to make sure that these are touching the frame because as I weave it's quite easy to make these go up and up and up. So keep, keep, uh, keep track of where those are. Keep track of the uh, shape of your frame as you go. I like to tell people you are the boss of the willow. Don't let it boss you around. So right there is where I want it. So that's where I'll push. See this thumb is pushing down and there's quite, quite a bend happening right there. Because so I want this weaver to go around these. And I'm lifting this up high, bringing this around, putting that down, squishing. That's called packing or wrapping. Now, this is the part that Elvira is having trouble with. So watch this. My thumb is holding it really tight. This has to bend and it has to do so slowly. Never mind that those are going out of the way as long as you don't actually lose them. And I'm pulling this at the same time as I'm bending it around and pulling it so that it stays close to this um, upright. And then when I bring it back, it's going to be in the opposite. It now goes over this one. Again, I can push down hard here so that this goes under. And it does one more pass. This time goes around this outside edge. And you can see that my frame 
is, is bowed out a little. That's because of that natural bow that the willow has. And the reason we wanted that bow to be in that direction is because as you bend these, they have a tendency to suck this in. And that's nice because that will end up making this more rectangular rather than whatever that shape is. <laughs> I'm thinking of crackers right now. One of those crackers. As a child, we had a lot of these crackers and some of them went like this and some of them went anyways. Never mind me. Now I'm going to pass this to the outside, bring it in, and now it goes over this one. Put the uprights, these guys, exactly where you want them before the weaver goes around them, and then they'll stay that way. Okay, so that's two done. They're both ending with tips, and it's correct that we have one ending in this direction, one ending in this direction, and from now on, they will do that. And you will see that eventually all of the butts will be on the bottom and all of the tips will be up top. And I started trimming this and I probably should have slowed down. But I left some of it to be trimmed to show you what that will look like. Maybe I'll just do a bit more weaving and uh, let you guys catch up and let me know if you have any questions. Okay, Jennifer walked away. Do all the new weavers start? No, they don't. They alternate. So our first one started on the left side and the second one started on the right. And my next one, my third, is going to start on the left. The way you know which way to start it, it's also where the tip ended. The tip is above and you're going to start bow with the butt. The butt is under, then it goes over, give that first hard bend, then it goes under, and when it comes to this edge, it wraps around. Now I'm going over, under, over, throwing that. And it has to do one more, because it's only done two. It's going to go around there, ends up above, goes under, and ends on this side. Fourth one. This ended with a tip up here. So this is butt. Oh, I better go back because there's a bunch of questions. Um, each weaver has to be long enough. Yes, exactly, Petra. Each we weaver has to be long enough to go three times. If you were collecting your own, that was something that was important. <laughs> I hope you got that. All right. And... Naomi, do we weave across just twice or do we need to weave the end of each willow? Not to the end, three times. Each one has to do three. So it has to have enough beefiness to the willow that it's somewhat useful still because you wouldn't really want this portion of the willow to be in your basket. It's kind of wimpy anyway. So it's a good thing that these are ending here where they did because they're kind of wimpy little tips. So my next one We'll start where this tip ended and it'll go underneath. And Naomi D. Yeah, okay, Rochelle. If my rods are too short, so I can go back and forth two times, not three, hmm, should I start on the opposite side from each last rod? That's a math question. Gosh, now you got me going. So if you went butt, tip, butt, tip, I think that would work. I think, I think, as long as you were regular. Um, I'm not sure why we think it has to be three. Hmm. There's something about all the thick ends then being on the same side if you did it only two times. So there would be that to consider. So alternating would be important even if you're only going uh, back and forth twice. Okay. Hi, Desiree. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Rochelle. Yes, always try new things and let us know how it worked. Okay. So I'm starting underneath here, going over there, pushing down, going under. There we go. Now 
Now you can see this is up high, right? So I want to make sure that my spokes are down where I want them to be. And then this weaver, while it still has some strength in it, will help push those down. At some point, at this part of the rod, it has less strength and less, uh, less impact on your weaving. Don't forget to scrunch them, get them nice and tight. Third time over for this one. Hi, Tabby. Okay, gonna keep on weaving, starting with the butt end under, pushing down. Bringing this close, wrapping. realized I was on the wrong side of that butt and make sure I'm not catching that as I go around. I'm pulling a little bit. This ended on here so now my butt goes under there. I miss all the snickers. I can't hear you guys. I might have to switch to zoom. <laughs> whole feedback part of teaching is missing here. There we go. Going under, scrunch, pinch, bend. Push. This far end now. So you'll see there's a pattern. I have now six rods in. The tips are all above. Flip it over and the butts are all on this side. And it's holding well enough that I don't have to worry about these so much anymore. So this is the fun part. I'm going to put a couple stripes in again. And I'm having a look at these yellow rods because when I was cutting them, I realized they're slightly thicker than these greenish reddish ones. And I didn't want that to be too obvious in my weaving. But I don't think it's going to be too bad, so I'm going to continue. This was the tip, starting with my butt underneath. Ah, better. What do you say? Bonus here. One of my weavers is somehow sticky with black poplar resin. <laughs> yes, springtime is here. Anytime, yep, you uh, you encounter those smells, it makes you feel good. Ah, uh, did. Carly's asking, did I twist tie the mainframe together? Only the parts where it joined. So this butt end here was shaved on the inside of it, and this tip end was shaved on the outside of it so that they could form the same thickness relatively as one of these other sides. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Yvonne. Okay, I'm gonna keep weaving. Thanks. Pushing, so you can see this is really a little stiffer. So I'm going to make sure that that bends to go underneath of this and not cause undue stress on these two to want to raise themselves up so that this isn't flat. Um, my friend, my friend Catherine calls that corrugation and I love that term. So it's when, when your um, rods end up being like way out from one another, your uprights. I don't know if you can see in this basket here, but this one's out, these ones went in, and then these ones came out again. So anyways, you gotta be the boss. Be the boss of the yellow and make sure that it, these weavers weave around the spokes they're supposed to. These yellow ones are the ones by Niskew. I think I posted a long time ago where they were. Um, there's not very many left, but there's a few left if you guys still want to go there and help yourselves. Okay. 
one, one yellow one, and add another yellow. This is the tip, so the butt starts right beside it and under, pushing that down. again and last one. okay so I think from now on I'll uh, continue with these reds and then another band of yellow and then end with the greenish red ones at the far end here um, Oh, I wanted to say that these are all made with fresh willows. These willows were cut like today in this case, or some of yours were cut a few days ago and kept outside, but they hadn't had that benefit of drying out completely and re-soaking. And uh, that first time that willows dry is when they shrink the most. So when these shrink, there is going to be uh, some loosening happening. And in, in these cases, these uh, uprights might decide to come out. So what you can do is um, keep that in mind in when you come to the center, or perhaps you might be able to do this at, at both ends, but say in a month from now, you might be able to fit one more thin rod in, and you'll do so by figuring out where the, where the butt end was. You know, here's the tip, right? So you'd have to try to squeeze this in, and it won't be as hard because these will have dried and uh, when they dry, they will have shrunk. So there might be a gap or space there. And you can always add fresh willows into that to create that tension and make it strong again. So, um, Tannis has a question. Oh, but I don't know what it's referring to. All it says is where. If you wanna clarify, I'm happy to say where, what. <laughs> so no worries. Yeah, okay, so what I'll do then is I'll show you what to do to trim all of these. I will continue weaving on this, but I don't think there's a need for that on the live portion. So what I'll do is with these pruning shears, I will lift each of the, um, I think I'll leave the last ones I did, but I'm going to lift the tips just a little bit. I want them to be able to rest on the framework. So they have to have a bit of an angle on them but they can't be any shorter than the frame or they'll do the springy thing and leave. Hard time getting a tight bend on the edges. Any hints for Jennifer? And where can we find more? Oh, Tannis. Okay, what I'll do, Tannis, is um, I will tag you on the where to find willows um, uh, notices. They are in the Alberta Natural Baskets um, group. And there's three or four times where I've said, oh, I see willows and I gave directions and things, but I'll try and tag you on a couple of those so you know where to go. And Jennifer, yes, that edge is the hardest. hardest. Let me just finish trimming and then I'll show you what I do there. So I'm lifting this tip, giving it an angled cut so that it flies, lays flat. And these are now, look at that. And the same thing will be happening on the butt end. You lift the butt up, give it an angled cut so that it last, uh, rests against that last edge. There, like that. And I did that with these ones. You can see these ones were done like that all along that edge until I got to here. So I'll finish those. Looks like my pruning shears need some attention. Perfectly sharp. Oh, and then the other thing you'll need to uh, to trim are these ends here. So you can cut those off too. Um, if you wanted to make a really fancy tray, you could you could make these really long, long and long, and then do some kind of. Oh, I have one of those. I'll show you. This was done on a tension tray. 
but the uh, those weavers were brought together and then woven like that to make a bit of a handle. So that's an option you can do. And then going back to Jennifer's question, I'm going to add another weaver in here and show how I bend around the edges. So ended here with this um, tip. So the first one starts with a butt under there. I'm going to push down so that this is going around here under. And then I come to this first edge. This is probably the hardest because your weaver has the most bulk here and it's hardest to move. Um, sorry, I'll get to your question in a minute, Lori. So at this point, because a lot of it is being held, I can lift it up. At the very beginning, it's harder to do this. But right now, I can use my fingers to push down and basically I'm squeezing the weaver against the rod, pushing that down. And as I'm bringing this rod around, I'm also giving it a bit of a pull, but this hand is keeping it from actually moving. So there's some strength in the fingers happening here. This is pulling and bending at the same time. So that's how you get that around there. And then you have to finish by bringing it to the top again. And again, push it down, and bring it around. And this side will be easier but I can pull, the, pull a little bit as I'm bending it around that spoke. And then you get that really nice curve happening around there, like that. Does that answer, Jennifer? Hopefully. Oh, hi, Christine. Okay, so that is that. And I'll continue with the green color here. Do another band of yellow and then end with green. Okay, Lori had a question. Do you have to trim the tips or can you just weave them into, and then I lost the question, into the rows? No, you should, you should trim them because if you keep uh, weaving them, uh, then you'll have uneven um, uh, weaving. You, you'll have some with three and some with four, depending on how long your rods are. So um, it's important. I don't know why it's important. It's part of the perfectionism part of the um, regularity of weaving is to have it exactly the same that's what that's what makes it look good <laughs> okay um and laura do you have to trim oh wait that's what you, i just answered okay jennifer hmm yeah that is an issue jennifer you do need the frame to be quite sturdy because these have to be able to bend around it without affecting your trim. I think uh, the first one I started, which I've already, ah, here it is. This one, which I first demonstrated on, is definitely of that caliber where it's, it was too thin, which is why I stopped using that one. Okay, good. Okay. Well, these questions can continue afterwards after I turn off the live portion. Wow, we have 23 people watching. That's pretty cool. Thanks for leaving, everyone. Um, I will be happy to answer any questions and if you need help finding willows, please, um, please just send me a PM or put it on the, on the, uh, Facebook group, Alberta Natural Baskets. And, uh, if you find a good group, please share it with others. And especially if we do some, uh, you know, group gathering, group coppicing, then those patches will be ready for us uh, all to use in future years too. Okay, something has stalled. <laughs> I'm not sure what's happening, but my video is off. <laughs> okay, thanks for everything, guys.